One of the most prominent horror subgenres and archetypes is that of the vampire. A bloodthirsty and monstrous creature of the night that lurks in the shadows waiting to strike at any turn as a means to acquire fresh human blood. It is a popular character device used in numerous horror novels such as the groundbreaking and famous Bram Stoker's Dracula, which set the standard for the usage of the vampire myth in fiction. As far as film history is concerned, even the cinematic history behind vampires is as mysterious as many vampire stories themselves. Though commonly depicted on stage and in some of the earliest films ever made, the subject of the first ever vampire film in history has been highly debated and controversial. One source claims that the first ever true vampire movie was a Russian adaptation of the Bram Stoker novel released in 1920, which is now allegedly lost. However, most sources argue that the first true vampire film ever made was a Hungarian production known as Dracula's Death, also released in 1920, in which a woman, confined to a mental institution, sees nightmarish visions of Dracula advancing towards her. Yet the film is completely lost, with the exception of the stills you are now seeing. A year later, Nosferatu, A Symphony of Horror was released, which cemented the vampire as a cinematic element with its darkly and surreal German expressionist qualities, and haunting vampire Count Orlok, played by Max Schreck, with his terrifying makeup and on-screen presence. Nine years later, in 1931, Universal Studios quickly gained prominence over the world of horror with the release of Dracula, the first true adaptation of the original novel, the film that perfected the vampire formula at last and by far featured the greatest Dracula, portrayed by Bela Lugosi, with his distinctive and thick Hungarian accent. Listen to them. Children of the night. What music they make. And then later, from the 50s to the 70s, Hammer Studios in England revitalized the character of Dracula to become a more brutal, maniacal beast portrayed by Christopher Lee. A contrast to the more brooding and haunting Lugosi, Lee's Dracula was much more violent and overt in his sinister behavior and intentions, often murdering his victims in the most depraved of manners, whilst consistently getting resurrected in each sequel. Now my revenge is complete. <laughs> Over the years, there have been countless and constant usages of the vampire throughout the world of motion pictures, from reimaginings of classic tales to more original takes. Yet by the 21st century, the vampire, though still prevalent, seemed to have run its course until the formula was revitalized when the world bore witness to a little 2008 film stemming from Sweden entitled Let the Right One In. Interestingly, Scandinavia is by no means a stranger to the horror film, as countries such as Sweden produced horror films right at the beginning of the genre's history, enabling Sweden to lay claim to the genre in a way in which most countries would be unable to do so. One of the most early of examples is the 1921 classic The Phantom Carriage, a silent horror masterpiece that revolves around a Scandinavian superstition that states that any person who passes away last before the start of the new year will automatically be cursed to drive the phantom carriage for the entire following year, a role in which the ghostly carriage driver collects the souls of all those that have passed throughout the year. Then there is the iconic and classic 1922's Haksan Witchcraft Through the Ages, a documentary-style film detailing tales of witchcraft and Satanism, as well as the inclusion of imagery that were very much risque at the time, including a depiction of Satan and the featuring of demons. Fast forward 86 years later and Let the Right One In is released, a fascinating piece of cinema and a refreshing horror film as well as perhaps the modern horror film that has impressed me the most. The plot centers around an introverted and lonely young boy named Oscar who lives with his mother in a Stockholm suburb in the early 1980s. Typically bullied and ostracized by his peers in school, he develops fantasies of revenge by collecting newspaper clippings concerning brutal murders. Soon, his world turns upside down when a mysterious girl named Ellie moves in next door with an older man. Initially reluctant to form a friendship with Oscar, Ellie is informed of Oscar's troubles with bullying and assures him to stand up for himself, prompting Oscar to take after-school weight training classes as a means to learn how to defend himself. Meanwhile, Hokan, the man Ellie moved in with next door, goes on a killing spree throughout suburban Stockholm, murdering a simple passerby but escapes due to the presence of a dog walker. His style of killing involves stringing up his victims and draining their blood in a method known as bleeding, in which it is soon uncovered that he commits such murders for Ellie. After botching one bleeding attempt, Hokan disfigures himself upon realizing he is close to getting caught in hopes of diverging the authorities away from identifying him. Growing increasingly aware of Hokan's incompetence as a blood caregiver, Ellie disposes of him by draining his blood whilst he's in the local hospital following his disfigurement. Meanwhile, Ellie and Oscar grow closer and a robust bond is formed, especially after Ellie's influence finally causes Oscar to stand up for himself in the face of the bullies. Eventually, Ellie reveals to Oscar that she is a vampire, after it is shown that Ellie decided to take Hokan's place and go on about a murder spree of her own. 
killing one man and injuring a woman named Virginia, who endures a ghoulish symptom from Ellie's attack, as such an attack enabled Virginia to become severely allergic and sensitive to sunlight, hence her bursting into flames once sunlight shines over her. When Virginia's boyfriend, Lake, breaks into Ellie's apartment intending on killing her out of retribution, Oscar and Ellie join forces to do away with him. Understandably disturbed, Oscar dislikes Ellie's lust for murder until Ellie explains that she needs to kill rather than wants to kill. As the bond reaches new heights, Ellie later saves Oscar from a grueling fate in which his bullies challenge him to remain underwater for three straight minutes without breathing. Following the clearing out of his bullies by Ellie, the two are seen departing on a train to a new location as Ellie is in a box. The film is an adaptation of the novel by the same name written by John Lindquist, one of Scandinavia's greatest horror writers who often utilizes bodies of water such as pools or rivers in his work as symbols of darkness and sinister energy considering he had lost his father to drowning when he was at a young age which explains the memorable finale of Let the Right One In. An overarching strength of the film and novel alike is its overall freshness regarding the vampire legend. The dynamic of a 200 plus year old vampire harboring the body of a 12 year old girl is far more unique than the traditional vampires we have grown acclimated towards over the past number of decades. And the complex relationship between Ellie and Oscar exceeds that of the typical relationship one would see in a vampire movie in which a more symbiotic relationship is formed. The story boldly aims to humanize a legend that has haunted whole populations and moviegoers for centuries by showing a marvelous amount of sympathy on the part of Ellie towards Oscar. Even as Ellie's intentions in regard to Oscar are shrouded in deceit as well as a layer of mystery, her sorrow as a result of the brutal bullying towards him, as well as the deep social isolation he forges for himself, are only reminiscent of the suffering Ellie suffers herself, as living the life of a vampire would only punish one to lead a life of true isolation and outright misery. Especially considering the fact that Ellie is 200 years old. As a result, Oscar feels entranced by Ellie as, though they are both incredibly different, they are both lonely in their own respective ways a fact that only drives Oscar towards Ellie. Unless under hypnosis by Count Dracula, for instance, vampire victims would normally be reluctant and terrified to be in the presence of such an entity, which contrasts Oscar who, due to his social isolation, finds harmony in Ellie's presence and embrace despite the fact that she is a vampire, proving that when an individual is trapped in desperation, they would be willing to abide by any force that promises to save or even assist them. Another striking element of the film is the time period and setting. Unlike traditional vampire tales that are set amongst the opulent gothic ruins of castles or the misty landscape of cemeteries, Let the Right One In finds itself in the middle of a boisterous and busy Stockholm, filled with many inhabitants and a largely unlikely place for a vampire to dwell in. Unlike the typical rural areas they have sheltered themselves in to avoid detection, Ellie seeks to remain close to a fresh supply of blood at all times, continuing her miserable and downright terrifying existence. One connection to older films to note is the genuine despair that Ellie experiences as a result of her vampiric condition, which is akin to films such as 1945's House of Dracula from Universal, in which Dracula, who by that point was being played by John Carradine, wishes for his vampirism to be reversed and cured through scientific means, just as Ellie remains in a state of struggle to constantly find blood from new victims, an exhausting and toiling task in the eerie wintry landscape of Sweden. Overall, with a reinvention of classic ideas and complex character development, Let the Right One In features a far more human and discreet horror, a horror that is subdued and more effective in its delivery than a film offering nothing but excessive gore and jump scares that we have grown so accustomed to over the years. With strong acting performances, a memorable score, a riveting plot, and haunting winter feel, this modern horror masterpiece is best enjoyed late at night during the winter season and especially during a snowstorm as, just like a storm, Ellie's behavior can change at whim to satisfy her vampiric hunger.